GG test. Leslie Hervey, interim clerk. Good afternoon. I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Ludo, County Administrator. Thank you so much. I'm Stephanie Sumro Dumas, President of the Hamlin County Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we just have a few things on our agenda today, but very important items. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to say just say a few words. Um, if security could please bring over the first playoff ball. Security forgot the ball. <laughs> what kind of security are you? Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, but um, what I will say, and I'll wait for a minute. Um, I was, I had an interview this morning, just a little bit ago, about our um, arts grant and cultural organizations uh, grant that's coming up. It's our second round of um, for the arts and cultural organizations. Our first round, we spent 3.5 million. Uh, through our CARES Act, and then the second round, uh, which opened today, will be two million for our second round. And Artways is going to coordinate the process of the application uh, process, and they've done a great job before, and I'm sure they will again. Um, and I just want to say, we know arts and cultural organizations, they um, relieve our stress, they help with our mental health, and uh, somewhat like the Bengals have done. Uh, security oh. <laughs> okay. and so I just wanted to take a word uh, to uh, say a few words because people say oh not that again yes that again and we're proud to do it congratulations to the Cincinnati Bengals uh, what a powerful demonstration of teamwork that they showed uh, this Saturday Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon all had a great game uh, this Saturday this last Saturday however the player's name that sealed things for the Bengals was, of course, Evan McPherson, who was the kicker. Congratulations, Evan. Woo, 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 who day, who day, who day, you guys. And uh, congratulations to Cincinnati also. Um, and it's funny because I watched all the playoff games and every one of them ended with a field goal. That is really something different. So we want to thank them for their success and we're moving forward uh, for our next success and to the Super Bowl. So I just wanted to thank them again for bringing excitement to us. We know with everything going on in this county, we need something to 
distract us and something good to distract us. And so we're gonna move on to our commissioner, our health commissioner, Mr. Greg Kesterman, who's gonna talk about COVID-19 and our comprehensive update. Welcome, Greg. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to, to give an update. So today for the first time in more than a month, I'm able to say that our actual cases per um, active cases within Hamilton County have decreased slightly. So last week we were at 40,000 active cases in Hamilton County. This week we were at 38,000. So certainly um, heading in the right direction from my perspective. Maybe a little bit more graphic or telling is the seven day average. Um, oh, January 16th, we had 2,470 cases and today we are down to 1,221. Now I say that and it sounds wonderful seeing the cases drop by half, but this is the, the same map that I shared. This is from today and we still have tons of COVID in our community. And so as I run through some of these slides where we see a little bit of trending in the right direction, I think I don't want us to take it for granted that where we've come and how we've gotten here and the hard work, we still need to work hard together as a community to get through uh, the rest of the pandemic. Today, kind of mirroring our cases, our reproductive value is at almost an all time low at 0 0.65. When you see cases drop so drastically, it's an indication that things are shrinking. So that's good news for the region. We are at 0 0.77. Our percent positivity for the region is at 31.7. Hamilton County, I'll share in a, in a moment, but it's even lower than that. Hospitalizations, intensive care unit admissions, and ventilators still remain extremely high. When you look at hospitalizations, they have dropped, which is excellent news. Today, we're at 950 individuals in the hospital systems with COVID-19, and that is lower than where we were a week ago. But to the point that I've already made, it is higher than any other peak in this pandemic. We are still inundating our hospitals with people with COVID-19. And so caution still continues to be needed. Our ICUs are at 192 today and our ventilators are at 130. And I um, like to share this information too with regards to deaths. We are seeing between four and five deaths per day. So we continue to have a significant impact with this pandemic. Turning to the Centers for Disease Control map, uh, the entire state of Ohio remains high transmission. Hamilton County is no differently, although these metrics are improving. Today we are at 1,272 cases per 100,000. Our percent positivity is at 17.64. The uh, vaccination clinics continue to make progress. We continue to see the most progress in the 5 to 11 year olds and the younger age groups but all age groups, we're seeing people come in for boosters and first doses, which is always exciting. We still operate at the Board of Elections. As we see a decrease in numbers at the BOE, we're starting to transition into more mobile units, so back into the community, which is great news. Uh, we'll be focusing on areas with high social vulnerability index indexes. And lastly, um, you've seen this slide before, but testing, uh, if you need testing or vaccinations, this is the website I recommend testandprotectcincy.com. It's a great resource, still maintained, and it uh, really does have accurate information. Plenty of availability for testing, plenty of locations everywhere in Hamilton County for getting the vaccine. I will stop there and turn it over for any questions. Thank you so much, Commissioner. I had one question as it relates to hospitalizations. Is there a way we can break down the demographics of the hospitalizations, um, African American, white Americans, and because um, that would be, of, of course, indicative of hopefully we would know who's not getting vaccinated. So uh, these these numbers, these graphs are good, but can we break down specifically the hospitalizations? Yep, let me check with my epidemiology team and either next week when I report back or in two weeks, mm -hmm. depending on how long it takes them to, okay. to do some data analysis, but I should be able to do that. And, and that would be great uh, if we could maybe do it for the deaths also? Yep. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, Vice President Reese, any questions or comments? Yeah. Yes, uh, first of all, it's good to hear that the numbers are going down, um, uh, not just here, but across the country. That's right. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I saw something where uh, Dr. Fauci said these days may be behind us. So that was uh, positive. I certainly want to be cautious, but it's going in the right direction, going down. So thank you very much. That's it. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
Commissioner Driehaus. Just very quickly, thank you again for your presentation and thanks to your team. Um, we did have the vaccination clinic here last week. It went, it went well. Um, and once again, your team stepped up and they were very courteous. They were you know, encouraging people to get the vaccination, get, get information. So thanks again for all the continued work of public health. Thanks for that. I'll take that back to them as well. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing up about the clinic on the 19th, even though the numbers were lower. If we can get one person that's vaccinated or boosted, uh, that's a success. Every shot counts. Concerned. That's right. Yeah, there you go. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam President, yes. before we go to the next item, uh, you had mentioned the, the bingles, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to highlight, I know that uh, your office has asked us on Thursday, mm -hmm. um, and we're asking, I guess, everybody, mm -hmm. uh, that'll be our spirit day, uh, who day, put our jerseys on. And you're right about Evan McPherson. I was screaming to everybody, get you a number two jersey. They must have heard me. Uh, they said, I saw on Twitter, there are no more McPherson jerseys available anywhere. Um, so I uh, just wanted to highlight that for those who want to wear that. And then also, uh, I had gotten a call from a constituent who wanted to see, like they did in other cities, when they have these, uh, when they have these playoff games and championship games, where they are in their stadiums if they can't make it to the location. And um, I did uh, present that. I think it's a good thing. Uh, we have something in our contract that allows us to do county days and looking forward. I know our administrator is working to see if that's something we can pull off now. Um, but that's something that I wanted to let people know when you do give us ideas. We do try to bring those ideas forward. And um, I think it would be a great thing. And I'm getting all kind of calls about it. So hopefully we'll be able to to do it. It's just such an exciting time uh, for our, our city and our county. And uh, like um, Madam President said, we have we have uh, fans outside of Hamilton County that are have been uh, rocking with us, uh, sometimes in lonely areas. I know my cousin in Chicago, he's so happy uh, that he's able to wear the Bengals with pride. So looking forward to that and just wanted to mention that if people want to put their uh, put their jerseys on on Thursday. Thank you so much. Did you want to make any comments? Okay. Very good. Thank you for bringing that up also. Um, our next, and I was going to say those that are over there, if, even though you're separated by chairs, there are a few chairs over here if, you, if you'd like to do that also. Okay. So we have our next item is convention district planning. Um, Jeff, is uh, our administrator, is going to bring out some of those uh, some items just to introduce, but as promised, um, my colleagues have a resolution in front of you. Uh, we've all had the ability to um, make some corrections, additions, revisions to the resolution. Um, the title of the resolution, we're not gonna discuss it right now. I'm gonna let Jeff um, start it off and then he'll, we'll go from there. But the title of the resolution is a resolution for those that are watching in support of coordinating with the city of Cincinnati on a redevelopment strategy for the downtown convention center district. Um, and who knows, uh, that title may change, I don't know. But uh, we certainly needed to discuss it. It's extremely important to our downtown area and we need to move forward um, to make that happen, but to ensure uh, that we're all in agreement with how that does happen. So I'm gonna open it up to uh, Jeff Aluto. Madam to President, do some, yes. I just might need to make one correction. Um, I'm, at least my office, I have not had a chance to make revisions, corrections, or inclusion to the resolution. I received it, I think it's 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, and I thought today was the discussion to go forward with it. Uh, so I just wanted to just, uh, and I've been in meetings back to back all day. So. Uh, I do have it forward. I look forward to going through it, but I have not uh, submitted any revisions or corrections at this time. So this is the first time you're seeing it? You're, you haven't been involved? Yeah, 7 a.m. is the first time that I saw it. They kept saying it's another revision, it's another Yeah, we revision. kept revising it, but did yeah. you see the initial one at all? Uh, there's several initial ones. That's there was what some, I thought, there were, yeah. But I have not included my comments in them. I just wanted to make sure that's clear. Okay, but but I look forward to doing that uh, yeah, after okay. today's presentation. Okay, so uh, maybe you can comment on the the revisions or uh, the the first one you got, the second one you got. Maybe you can make some comments about that. What you have already seen. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. that would be great, um, Mr. Ludo. Thank you, Madam President. So I just wanted to provide a, a little bit of background 
uh, for you know, the board is mostly uh, steeped in this, but mostly for the public who's, uh, who may want to understand uh, the county's role in uh, convention, dis convention and tourism activities um, w within our community and how that gets us to the point of considering a resolution to move forward with uh, convention district planning. So um, the, the county has actually been involved as a major investor um, in our, with our convention infrastructure for, for quite some time. Um, it, Bridget, if you want to hit the first slide there. Um, so just a, a couple of things. I'm going to keep this very short. I also want to say I have uh, uh, Mr. Adam Gelter is here from uh, 3CDC. I'm going to turn it over to him to talk specifically about uh, some very specific, more specific scope of work items uh, related to convention district planning. Uh, but just historically, the county has been involved going back to uh, the early 2000s and 2006 with the expansion of the Duke Energy Convention Center, back then the Albert Sabin Convention Center, uh, through the implementation of a 3.5% transient occupancy tax. Uh, more recently, the county has been involved in acquiring the property uh, of the former Millennium Hotel to remove what had been a, a blight uh, and an anchor on our ability to attract and retain uh, conventions in our community and the opportunity to attract a first-class headquarter uh, convention hotel for the community, which is instrumental to drive uh, additional convention and tourism. I also put a note on there that we, we've even uh, helped with the development and expansion of the Sharonville Convention Center up in the northern part uh, of the county uh, because we do have multiple convention nodes uh, here in Hamilton County, and we've been involved uh, in helping to, to fund uh, all of those. Um, so in our downtown convention district, we know that we currently have um, many challenges and opportunities. Bridget, if you could hit the slide. Uh, so uh, first and, and foremost, um, we know that COVID-19 has significantly delayed uh, the prospects for expanding the Duke Energy Convention Center. Just a couple of years ago, we were talking about uh, an imminent expansion uh, of the convention center. Uh, mostly financed through the county's occupancy tax model. Uh, the, the county's occupancy tax has held up through COVID, which is amazing, uh, actually, and is a testament to the, uh, the diligence of, of the board and of the CFA in stewarding those resources and making sure uh, that, the, uh, that the county's resources and the occupancy tax have held up through uh, the pandemic uh, at a time when everything else tourism related has been uh, pretty much decimated. Uh, at least in the early months and days of the pandemic. Uh, the Millennium Hotel demolition is, is on time and on budget uh, for completion in the summer of 2022. So that's a good thing uh, to get that property under control and to get it, de uh, get it demolished. Uh, in the interim, we know that we have a lack of headquarter hotel and committable room capacity, uh, which places Cincinnati at a competitive disadvantage. We have a tired and relatively blighted convention district compared to uh, our competition in other competitor communities, um, which is obviously a, a challenge we face. Uh, but we also know that the Millennium Hotel acquisition and some of the other work going on uh, throughout the, uh, the convention district places approximately seven acres uh, around the Duke Energy Center under public control, uh, either through uh, the county, the city, or the port. Bridget? So here's a map uh, that shows um, uh, at a high level some of those properties. Um, uh, in specifically, I really want to call attention to the, obviously the convention center, which is the light green shaded and the whatever that color is, uh, we'll, we'll call it orange and black, right, for today. So the, uh, uh, the orange and, and black uh, with black letters around the convention center, um, which shows the public property uh, that is um, in play, uh, which really gives us as a community an opportunity that few communities have, and that is to control uh, our own destiny as it relates to uh, expanding and revitalizing uh, our convention district. Bridget? So uh, last year, I think it was in 2021, uh, Convention Sports and, and Leisure had provided some recommendations uh, to the city, the county, and the business community uh, related to some priorities. Number one, priority one is a, a new 800-room convention center hotel. Uh, number two, uh, is absent the ability to expand uh, the convention center to initiate some upgrades to the Duke Energy Center focused on um, things that, uh, that modern convention goers want to see in terms of pre-function space, outdoor space utilization, et cetera, uh, to link the Duke Energy Center 
uh, with other nodes in the community over the Rhine, the riverfront, Fountain Square, et cetera, uh, and then ultimately to expand the Duke Energy Center when funding is available. So those are the main priorities that CSL called out in terms of putting uh, Hamilton County and Cincinnati on a more competitive playing field with its, uh, with its uh, competitive communities. Bridget? So in, in terms of moving that forward, um, county and the city have talked about the need for coordinated planning on this. To, number one, pursue a developer for a headquarter convention hotel. And to do that coordination work as it relates to needed improvements at the Duke Energy Center, to assess the development potential for surrounding properties, and look at the best um, and highest use for the Millennium Hotel site as well. Bridget? And so in terms of the path forward, the idea was to engage 3CDC to perform those, those planning and pre-development services. The City of Cincinnati is, actually, is considering a resolution this week uh, on the same uh, topic, so we're working in concert with our friends over at the City. Um, and the idea is to leverage 3CDC's experience with placemaking in the urban core. Uh, and obviously, if approved by the board, the administration would then negotiate an MOU with the City and 3CDC uh, consistent with the board's policy direction. So that, that, Madam President and Commissioners, is at a high level, um, some, his, some, some recent history on this and what brings us to this point. Um, I, I know Mr. Adam Gelter is here um, who can provide some more specifics on the uh, direct scope of work uh, that would be associated with this. Madam President, any comments? Uh, um, no comments to that. Uh, okay. We can keep our notes. Um, I see Jeff Burden is here. I, I didn't see if, if Yeah, uh, I, I uh, would you like sure. to make a couple so, comments? Yeah, this okay. this pillar is uh, you've, you've, you've been in this room before you know yeah. the, the, the Madam, the Madam President before we go to that I do have a question for the administrator uh, you mentioned the Millennium Hotel which um, was um, torn down or is being torn down uh, it is a um, we're going to be using but we use bonds by the taxpayers and then there was a lawsuit that came out and there was a five million dollar judgment where is that on the millennium hotel where, where i'm sorry where are we on that regarding the millennium hotel so i know uh, i've taught had some recent conversations with the port uh, i'm not sure uh where they are with their legal response on that but we're supposed to have a follow-up conversation with them shortly to figure out where they are on whether it, there's going to be an appeal or any kind of legal response on that before we know exactly how that judgment will come into play mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to know that and have that out so the people in the public know what, where we are with that particular property. Sure. Thank you. I know, I know you had discussed that with all, all of the board and, and we were waiting to see what action was going to happen. Correct. So, um, and as soon as something happens, I'm sure we'll be informed of that. Um, hello, sir. How are you? Hello. You had a few words you'd like to say, Mr. Yes. Garden? Yes. Th thank you, Madam President, mm -hmm. to the County Commissioners and staff, I appreciate uh, your time today. Uh, we're excited to work with you uh, on this topic. Uh, I am here in my capacity as uh, a leader of our 2026 FIFA World Cup host city uh, effort. Uh, as board chair of the Convention Visitors Bureau, where Madam President is an active board participant and leader, uh, and as someone who's been working closely on efforts related to tourism and attracting people in our city for a couple decades. Uh, today is exciting because we have a historic opportunity as a result of the leadership of the county, the city, the Port Authority, the CFA, the CVB, among others, to finally consider the convention district as a whole rather than piece by piece uh, without a strategy. You all know that from a tourism perspective, our region is more and more attractive every day. Visitors from all over the world value our diversity, appreciate that there's much to do here, love that our city is walkable, bikeable, and has effective public transit. Uh, we have vibrant and diverse businesses throughout our downtown and in our neighborhoods, and over and over again, we're making the best of lists that bring people here. That's all good. And yet, our convention center and the area immediately around it has stalled for a lack of strategy. As a community, we haven't evaluated the future of our convention center in some time. Uh, the parcels around the convention center are vacant or underdeveloped, and we all know uh, what was, what's going on with the Millennium Hotel. Thank you to our county commission for your leadership on the decision to put the Millennium site in play. Uh, let me underscore the importance of the hotel. Uh, without it, it will be nearly impossible for us to host the World Cup, uh, and that is the single biggest tourism event it would be in the history of our city. The World Cup will fill the Paul Brown Stadium, 
with attendees from around the world for multiple matches while attracting a global TV audience, boosting our economy and highlighting what we want the world to know about this region, our beautiful community. Just to give you a sense, the total economic impact of the World Cup 2026 is about $5 billion with some 40,000 jobs. A Super Bowl, which we all want the Bengals with one more win to get to, if we were hosting a Super Bowl, it would be an uh, economic impact of about 300 to 500 million, again, compared to 5 billion. The media exposure of a World Cup is about 1.1 billion. Super Bowl is about 150 million. So uh, this is enormously important to show that we will have sufficient hotel rooms for these visitors who come in from around the globe in 2026. January 31 is the deadline where we're trying to get all the information to the FIFA committee to evaluate Cincinnati in, a, in comparison to these other cities. So we look forward to getting these resolutions passed is the start of the process, but signaling that we have public leadership that, it, that will be working to get a new headquarters hotel online in 2025 and that they can see that while they're evaluating Cincinnati. So today, the Millennium Hotel is on the way down. The port and other allied entities have control over the property, as the administrator just shared, around the convention center. And there is a civic will to dream about the convention district that can be the envy of cities across the country. Over the past several months, we've been in conversations with city, county, civic leaders to assess what must happen for us finally to compete with other peer cities in our convention district space. We all agree that the biggest challenge is that there has never been one leading organization to set the overarching strategy for the convention district. Effectively, a lot of, a lot of cooks in the kitchen, but mm -hmm. no chef mm -hmm. running the show. And so uh, we today, we're excited that you will consider the resolution that uh, uh, appoints 3CDC as the lead development manager for the project, not the developer of the project, the lead manager is sort of the chef helping to orchestrate with all the different cooks, of which there are many important ones, no more important than our elected officials at the county who brought us the opportunity, uh, and then the city. Uh, Adam Gelter is going to explain the role in more detail, but what I can tell you with certainty is that there is no other organization ready and able to do this and ready to do it right, leading the process. Just a sense, because you were such important partners at the county, uh, I'm not here, I want to stress, but you were an important partner. I'm not here representing FC Cincinnati, but the World Cup bid and the CVB. I just want to point out, though, that when people set their mind to inclusion and getting it right is an important public policy, even on the private side, you can get, we can get great results. On our project, 25% MBE, 7% WBE, 30% SBE, over 70% spending uh, in these uh, underrepresented categories, over $180 million spent with those private businesses, largely small businesses. So you know that when we say it's a priority, we can see real results. So 3CDC and the staff have created the most vibrant and welcoming public spaces. They know how to do complex development projects inclusively and thoughtfully, and they know how to create partnerships to get big things done. So I'm excited that they're willing to do this project, and now I can turn it over to Adam from 3CDC. Thank you for your time. Thank you, um, Mr. Bardeen, if you want to wait a second. Were there any questions or comments as it relates to Mr. Bardeen's comments? Yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you, um, Jeff, for being here. Uh, you and I have been friends for a long time. Um, and as you know, we're moving forward. We got to get the best business deal. You mentioned the World Cup, and uh, certainly we all are excited about that but i have yet to see a bid package and i've been asking uh, i understand you're saying that one of the requirements is a hotel uh, do you have a copy as the head of cvb of the bid package and what that investment so we can have a list of here's everything we got to finance and then here i understand your economic impact but i was reading that uh, there's tax-free zones and some some cities dropped out chicago some others because they couldn't make money, the public would put in the money, but we wouldn't make any money. So um, I've been asking for a bid package because when we talk about numbers, we got to look at, you know, what is the things that we're going to be responsible for? How much is that going to cost the taxpayers? Because uh, we're not just, you know, like you said, we're not just cooks in the kitchen. No, we actually own the kitchen. So can you, do you have that available or is that available so that we know what we have to, what we're responsible for? 
M Madam President and Commissioner, uh, I, I had thought that staff had shared all the relevant information with you, so I'll, I'll go back and see why that hasn't. I want to be really clear. FIFA has not said you have to have a hotel. What, oh. what we have heard is that they have concerns that we don't have enough hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to take advantage of this opportunity, and we think it's an enormous opportunity as I let out, we would be well served to give a level of confidence that we are going to get the hotel. I think we're going to get the hotel because at the end of the day, it, as a community, we need it. Uh, since March of 2020, we've lost definite cancellations, 193 groups, 194,000 room nights, 210,000 attendees, 86 million in direct sales economic impact, 162 million total sales economic impact that we've lost. So my only point being, I think for the betterment of our community, we're going to have to solve the hotel. I'm asking, can, if there's the ability to, can we signal to FIFA that as a community we understand we have to replace the millennium, we're going to re replace the millennium, and we're going to do so on schedule to open a new hotel in 2025 so that if we are awarded, and they're going to make that decision here over the next few months, Cincinnati is a host city, we want them to know that we will have more hotel rooms then. So I, I, I just want to stress, they're not saying you must build the hotel, nor are they saying that the county has to pay for the hotel. They're just saying, are you going to have enough hotel rooms? And we're trying to communicate to them on a schedule that allows us potentially, we hope, to win the bid. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. In the administration, I had asked about that. So if there is a bid package, I would like to see it. But the other thing I wanted to say, and you know, I'm coming from this industry, so I very much know it. been the deputy director of tourism, brought in over $100 million in conventions, one sitting there, the NAACP, Joe Mallory, who's here, who came twice. Majority of those conventions are African Americans that have brought, but African Americans ain't at the table. They're not leading this. They're the afterthought, and I'm trying to uh, kind of change that. But uh, you mentioned the impact of FC, and I think that's great. You also showed that um, at a meeting I was at, you're building a hotel yourself. Will that help with some of the room nights that we're going to be needing? If, if we're going to have 100,000 plus visitors from around the world, we're going to need all the hotel rooms we can get. When we had the USA-Mexico match, I think there was 90% uh, at capacity in the hotels within uh, the urban core of downtown. And I think 70%, don't quote me on the number, but about 70% between the airport and Mason. So mm -hmm. if you're going to have a, an event that's you know, multiple times USA, Mexico, I think all the hotel projects are going to help. We're going to have a small, we hope to have a small boutique hotel next to our stadium, but that's nowhere near akin to 800 rooms across the street from the convention center that could be used to support, hopefully, the Masons and the NAACP and all the other events that and you and I have discussed it. They want a hotel that's really connected, that can be convenient for meetings, rooms, uh, and other things, and, and ultimately, that's what we're trying to advance here. Yeah. And it's just, I, I, again, Adam can speak to this, but I'll speak since I'm here in my role. This is just the first step in the process. This mm -hmm. by no means is a development plan. This is just saying someone needs to be empowered to pull all the entities to the table, advising and being advised by policymakers, ultimately to get this project moving forward so that we can open a new hotel in 2025. And, we have these rooms to make sure that we're attracting so our Convention and Visitors Bureau staff can start booking these big, big conventions for 25 when we knew this hotel will be open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Drew House, did you have anything? I'm going to save my questions till the end of the presentation. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. Madam President, Commissioners, thanks for having me. I'm Adam Gelter with 3CDC. Um, I'm just going to sort of not try to belabor anything that's already been said, but uh, add a few uh, uh, fresh items here. So uh, as Jeff had mentioned, uh, Jeff Aluto had mentioned, um, there is really a pretty clear uh, steps here uh, of getting the hotel, evaluating the existing convention center, um, looking at the sites around there and how they can connect back to the city. And the only other thing that wasn't really highlighted is we do need to figure out an interim use for the Millennium site. It is a great site to expand the convention center, but we don't think that's in the cards in the immediate future. We need to preserve that ability. In the interim, we got to do something there. So thinking through what that is and how we do that as a community is an important uh, step to what we'll do here. 
Um, I think you all uh, have some familiarity with our track record of things like Music Hall, uh, Washington Park, Ziegler Park, these mixed use spaces. So this is something that we have done and have a, a lot of uh, experience in. You see 8451 and Foundry and those areas. We're working right in that area at 4th and Race and, and at the old Macy's. Um, this is something that uh, we feel very passionate about. It's been very clear in working with the city who voted 8-0 uh, out of committee last week to move this uh, project forward that uh, diversity, inclusion, and equity are very important pieces of what this is. It's something that's been important to 3CDC in our past, will be important as we move forward with this project. We've completed over 15 projects with my, uh, minority-owned general contractors, including some big ones, Fountain Square and uh, City Gospel Mission, 15th and Vine. Um, we have, as Jeff mentioned, uh, a number of projects with very strong percentage MBE participation uh, on the job, including a project as high as 45%. Uh, and we really work to build relationships with those contractors too. So it's not just that we have folks on our jobs. We know those folks. We have regular conversations with them. We include them in the process. We're talking to them even when we don't have a project so that we're all on the same page. When we do have a project, we know where we're moving forward. Another area that we uh, have really focused on over the last few years in particular is getting more black owned businesses into our storefronts. And so we've increased uh, over 100% in the last two years, the number of black owned businesses in our storefronts. That's 21% of our total uh, and over 20% of our businesses in over the Rhine. We've really made this a focus over the last few years. Um, we also, uh, this is uh, potentially relevant to the Millennium site where it'll be a public uh, site, so uh, likely we'll have some kind of programming. And we really pride ourselves on the diverse programming that we do at Fountain Square, at Washington Park, at Ziegler Park, uh, and even at Memorial Hall, where we're trying to do uh, different events that attract different folks from throughout our community uh, to these, and that's something that will continue to the event that we have that kind of space uh, at the Millennium. And then this is, uh, I think, really important. What I want to be clear, and this is kind of touched on by everyone, but I'm not sure it's totally clear, is that our role here is not as the developer. We're not looking to get paid anything for doing this work. What we're trying to do is sort of quarterback the effort uh, and try to get everyone aligned on a plan that move forward. There would not be, we would not have any power to impl implement that plan. We'd have to bring it back uh, with all the parties, the city, the county, the port, and the convention facilities authority in order to spend any money or move anything forward. Idea is that we could work with all the parties with sort of uh, that emphasis behind us that the city and county are on board to try to come up with a plan to do this. So we're not actually getting paid and we're not looking to develop this ourselves or own any of this space ourselves. We're looking to try to work with all the parties, get everyone's feedback and, and, and present a plan back to everyone to move this thing forward. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll open it up for any questions or comments as it relates to, um, well, the, all the um, participants who have given comments. So, uh, Vice President Reese, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I do. I have several. Um, not, uh, let's start with um, the resolution. We'll, we'll get to the resolution oh. as it relates to the people that Oh, the people that presented. were talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I want to go back to the premise of what I'm looking for, and that is ownership. And I really believe that we should do a national search and look at other cities that have done this already, a convention district successfully. I'm interested in an Atlanta model like they did with the airport. And it took the courage and sometimes not popularity of the elected officials in Atlanta to say we won't build this airport until we have some ownership stake in it. Now 3CDC, I was around when it was created. I was on city council. So I have nothing against 3CDC. It was, we had to get it for you even to come here. And, but there were some things I've learned over the years that I would have done differently that I didn't do then. Uh, one, it was the same pitch. We're not here to get any money. We could do it for free, so everybody loves that, all free. But we gave over the programming to Fountain Square. We gave the parking revenue. 
and we also gave some buildings in over the Rhine. Since that time, 3CDC, and nothing against it, you've done over the Rhine, but there has been some gentrification. You have listed some African-American businesses, but these businesses are just renting. If you were to get a different job or Steve Leeper, who, who I like, if he said, I'm going on to do something else, I'm stuck with the entity with not the right paperwork. So these businesses are renting from you as a landlord. And what I'm trying to push now, we're in 2022. I did that in what, 2005. I don't want the 2005 model. I want an ownership partnership model. And so when I look at the, um, the presentation that you made, we do have more businesses, but they all are renting. And if you go up on the rent, most of them be out of business. There is no ownership of any buildings. Now, when we do this district, it is said in the uh, scope of service, I know we're going to get more into it, but this, everything has changed except the scope of service package. And this scope of service is a lot on programming. We spent $39 million. I wasn't here, but we spent $39 million for Millennium. And you mean to tell me what we're going to get is some green space and some activities? We got to get more than that off of $39 million that the people are on the hook for. They were looking to get a hotel. They were looking to get something to get that $39 million back. They weren't looking to have some singing and dancing and programming. So that's a, that's a problem that we've got to get back to the people on uh, as well. Uh, in this also, I am, I've got an article that came from Pete Whitty on the west side of town. West Price Hill. He's on the Convention Facility Authority. And he's in here. He's a Caucasian gentleman. He's not, so it's not a Democrat or Republican. I think he's Republican. He put in here, the time is now for our region to put up or shut up with the possible construction of a new convention center, hotel, convention expansion, and new district around the convention center, all of which require significant public investment. Now, we keep saying we got a lot of cooks, and it's, it's, all of this is paid for by the public money. And we're going to turn it over to a non-elected entity with all due respect. But we are the only people, took me 200,000 people to get down here, not three votes, not two votes. And I'm going to be held accountable if it's not done correctly. He said we should use this as opportunity to create true minority equity, not 15%. Not inclusion, because we don't water that word down, but how do we get partnership from the court? I want the court, the general manager, to the quarterback, to all of the other components. Construction, you come in one time. You lay some concrete, you paint some walls, you out. These things we're building will be around forever. So for me, I want to make sure that we do it correctly, because I don't think we'll have another project like this in a long time. And we have not done a good job on those public projects in the past. So my question to you is, on this, I know you, uh, Steve Lieber said people begged him to do it and everything, and I, I don't know who did that. I, I wouldn't want you to do something you don't want to do. But why would we not do a national search? We do it for stuff like a superintendent of a public school. Why would we do the national search? Because it seems like all you're going to do is do a national search. Yeah, uh, Madam President, uh, Commissioner, uh, there's a lot there, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to um, yeah. respond uh, as I can. But uh, first, by saying I, I think you're, uh, I do agree with you a little bit that what we're suggesting is that we would be the person coordinating all the folks here, because it's the city, it's the county, it's the port, who's invested a lot of money in this as well. It's the CFA, which I actually happen to be a member of as well. I, I've worked with Pete uh, on the CFA for a number of years, and, and, and I, I think he has a good perspective in general on, on what, uh, and some knowledge about what we're talking about. So we do intend to do a national search for the developer of a hotel. <laughs> we do agree that there's a real opportunity that we need to try to seek to have ownership, uh, minority ownership be a big part of that. And again, we're not suggesting that we would, we're not empowered to go cut a deal with anyone or spend any of your money or spend any taxpayer money. What we're saying is we're going to help get 
everybody aligned to do that because if the county goes does it and the city's not there or the port does it and everyone else not there what everyone else is saying is if we can pull those everyone's thoughts together we can then go do a national search go look at the models of other cities and we can help create a plan that we bring back to you to decide if you think it's worthy of spending taxpayer money so we don't intend to do that and on the millennium site uh, again we i think are in agreement that that was a lot of money to spend for uh, for some kind of outdoor space but that's meant to be a temporary thing because i think everyone agrees that long term uh the studies that we had done i think everyone that's been looking at this agrees that long term the expansion of the convention center is a very positive thing and the ability to do that is very important not only that getting rid of those rooms which we weren't able to use for uh the conventions very well because they were so poor but so they're hurting us getting rid of those rooms makes it easier to bring someone in to do a new hotel because they're not competing against a really inferior product but at a very low price point. And so it's this actually really makes the hotel viable now that the Millennium isn't there anymore. So there is some element of getting a hotel from the, the, what we've spent because there's a real uh, trade-off there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's positive. And then going back to sort of 3CDC's record and inclusion, and, and you're, you're right, uh, all our tenants, not just the minority tenants, are, are renters. Um, mm -hmm because we're the owners of the buildings. That's not the model that we would be pursuing here. That's how we've developed over the Rhine because we wanted to control the commercial space, not because we didn't want anyone to get ownership. We don't want our tenants to make money. We absolutely want our tenants to make money. So we keep our rents low. We work with our tenants when they have issues. Uh, they all have leases. They're all gonna be there when I leave, when Steve leaves, because they have long-term leases that they've negotiated with us that'll be in place. Um, but we wanna make sure that we get the, the right tenants and the buildings stay in the right hands. And that just, regardless of who the tenants are, that we have tenants that further development of the neighborhood and we don't get check cashers and other people into the spaces that we've created there that sort of bring a negative to the community. That's why we uh, hold on to ownership there. It has nothing to do with not wanting folks to build their equity. And I think we're very open to strategies and we're working with some, new, some of our upcoming tenants on strategies that they could purchase their space from us in the future at, at a rate that it, uh, gives them the benefit for the rent they've paid us because we do want them to have build up equity in their business. So these are all things that we're working on. We, we again, agree with you with, you know, the model that we had maybe 15 years ago isn't the model that we should be pursuing now. We got to look at what other folks are doing, how we can do it better. Do you have experience at doing a convention district? Have you done one? I have not, but Steve uh, Leeper, my boss, uh, did build the convention center and, and the developed area around in Pittsburgh. And my last thing is in your scope of service, it talks about uh, buying up properties around convention center. Uh, and that jumped out at me because again, I don't, I wanna see some African-American ownership. I know we always throw out the worst thing like, oh, check cash and play. But I mean, there's some African-Americans that actually have good, uh, you know, and we've got national people. Uh, you know, Magic Johnson could come in and probably do a partnership. He's done it all over the country. Yeah, so it, how do we get ownership? Because it says you're going to be acquiring more land around Kovitcha Center. It, Madam President, Commissioner, I, I think what that was referring to specifically, uh, and it was sort of alluded to in, in the slide that Jeff put up with the map, is there is a parking lot that sits right in between the site that would be probably the most logical site for the hotel mm -hmm. at uh, Fifth and Plum. And the port owned uh, former convention place mall. There's a garage there that's privately owned. Um, and I think that's the thought is, do we as a community get control of that parking to then support whatever development we do? And that's a question that we don't know the answer to, but that's, I think that's what that was referring to. Okay, that should be probably spelled out a little better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me just say a couple comments before I move on to Commissioner Driehaus. Um, the, the bottom line is there is an urgency to get started to coordinate those stakeholders that are in our community, private, um, nonprofits, all that we decide to move in as stakeholders to make the decision about just getting started on the development of this headquarter hotel. The bottom line is we need a headquarter hotel. The bottom line is January the 31st, we need to make a decision, not a decision on a developer, but a decision on a headquarter hotel, regardless of FIFA coming or not, we need a larger, um, more expansive headquarter hotel. And we don't have the time 
right now. We will, um, I'm sure, for a developer to go nationally. But I want to know that I um, personally had a good faith effort to make this possibility of the World Cup um, and if they decide for us, for us to come, for them to come, and maybe this $5 billion uh, that was mentioned, uh, that Hamilton County can get some of that. Um, and so we do need to get off the dime and start getting people involved in making this come to fruition. Um, so there, and I agree, there has been a lack of strategy on how we're going to do that. Uh, that will be more jobs for people, uh, just more opportunity for those that are in our county. And we don't have the um, luxury of waiting. Um, we have to start pulling people together and we have to decide on who's going to do it uh, before the 31st. Um, and 3CDC has a track record of doing great work in our county. And so, um, yeah, and it would be good if, and I'm really, uh, I was really concerned about the fact that everyone has not had an opportunity or uh, Ms. Reese uh, has not had an opportunity to look at every whereas on this resolution because I know we worked on it all weekend, everybody, I thought back and forth. So I was just, just a little surprised on that. But we will go over the resolution today because on uh, Thursday, we will be voting on the resolution. Madam uh, President, Commissioner. Oh, hold on one second, please. Uh, you know, giving us something that we, I, I didn't go back and forth on this all weekend. So I want to get that straight. No, I got to get that straightened out. I'm going to so, straighten. No, wait. And the wait, January you, 31st. For a no, what is January 31st? You hold said on there's for a, a second. Okay. January 31st, um, they, the FIFA needs to know whether or not we are in agreement. Um, to having a um, headquarter hotel. Mm -hmm. um, so when they look at the, because they're in the process of selecting who they want uh, to be, to participate in FIFA. Madam President. And so we want to have on record that our board has decided that we know that we're in need of a headquarter hotel. Now, whether or not you looked at it, uh, as you know, as you always say, the commissioners don't talk to each other and we don't. So I was under the impression that you, you said you saw some drafts and so you have not seen the yeah. final one. So we can, we will go over the resolution yeah. and take a look but, at it. And then you will also have opportunity before Thursday to continue to take a look at it because we'll be voting on it on yeah. Thursday. But Madam President, I want to make sure that my, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've sat here for <laughs> going on my second year and my character has been attacked more, on more than one occasion. And I want to correct it because I, I work very hard. Everybody knows that. And I read a lot. Now we had multiple things that have been sent to us and we were told that today we would have a chance to have that discussion. So I don't want it to put out there that I was sent something over the weekend and I, I got something at 7 a.m. that was different okay. than was sent on Friday. No, we got it. We're going to say it. No, we got to say wait, it. Wait a minute. Now, secondly, point of order. Point of three, order. no point of order point is of order. Point of order as I'm talking. No, the point of order is point of order as I'm talking. No, I have the, point the floor. Of order is I'm the president and I'm leading this meeting I, and I am not attacking your character. I'm well, I was I had the floor. Excuse me. I'm just questioning why you did not get you don't this before And now. I'm giving you an answer. So, okay. I'm giving you an answer. So we're not, I'm not attacking your character. Well, I, I okay. did, I'm giving you an answer. And but I gave that answer earlier. And we keep going on it. Now, I asked about January 31st. I have not seen anything in writing saying that FIFA needed something from us on January 31st. No, we, we need Second to is, on January 31st, I'm okay with us writing a letter that we're going to have a hotel. Does January 31st say that 3CDC has to be voted on by January 31st? I just want to have all of the facts. And I did not, no one gave me any, I've not received one email saying that January 31st, FIFA needed to know this. At the same time, I don't see anything where FIFA said we need to have 3CDC uh, be the person. So I just want to, I, I mean, I just, uh, I just want to make sure because it was said that I didn't read it. And I want to just say that nothing I have has that in there well the 31st has been in a lot of our emails so i don't uh, maybe we need to check your email oh yeah system. bring my emails because so, let's bring, but anyway, bring my phone. Uh, point of order we're going to move to commissioner driehaus for her comments thank, thank you thank you um yeah i would like to just bring a little bit of um my perspective sure. historically to the conversation uh, because this to me is a moment in time where 
we have a real opportunity to make some progress down at the Convention Center District. We have been working on this for years, trying to get control as the city and the county of these properties that are surrounding the Convention Center, knowing that we can't do anything related to expansion at the Convention Center unless we have a viable headquarter hotel. And so we um, got control of that property. It took a lot of doing. It took a lot of expense. We finally did it. Um, we've been working on that for many, many years. And the board finally got control of the property, um, knowing that that could be used in the future either for an expansion of the convention center or for a headquarter hotel or something else. But those were the things that we were thinking through at that time when we made that. It, it was a substantial investment in time and money. Money. And so um, as we have moved forward and tried to understand the benefit of having all those properties around Convention Center at our disposal, you, you start to think about a district or a campus approach, which I think is the right approach to this uh, part of town that has languished for many years, as has been mentioned. And so we finally have the pieces in place where the Convention Center, owned by the city and in, in, maintained in coordination with the county, we've got the property across across the street that is owned by the Port Authority uh, that gives us a great opportunity for a potential hotel on that site. We've got the one where the Millennium sits and is being torn down that we can use for an expansion or something else that we decide on in the future. And then we've got these other pieces, Convention Place and the um, garage that was referenced. And as we think through the collective, you know, there's a real opportunity here to create some energy in this space and not do things piecemeal as has been done in the past because we just haven't had control of all these properties in the past. And so this idea that we bring in 3CDC to help coordinate this um, and, and do it in coordination with the city and the county, to my view, is the right approach. I mean, it, I've been... Um, called on the carpet a couple of times about not working as closely with the city as we might. And so here is an opportunity for us to work with in lockstep with the city, with uh, 3CDC coordinating the effort, not stepping in as um, the primary authority because they don't have the primary authority. The city and the county have the primary authority here. But we are doing it in conjunction with the city. My understanding is they have, I don't know if they've already passed the resolution or they have it in front of them, something very similar to what we have in front of us. And so I am, uh, I, I'm, I feel optimistic about that. I think we said this about the new council and the new mayor, that you know, there's a lot of optimism about our working relationship with the city right now. We've had a good relationship in the past, but this new group is really moving quickly and wants to work in coordination with the county. So um, I take that to heart and am anxious to get this thing moving as well. Um, the one thing I do want to highlight is that um, the, the Convention Center Hotel has been discussed in, in a number of ways here, but from my vantage point, the importance of that hotel going up as quickly as we can is to rejuvenate the tourism industry in this region post-COVID. And I know we're not post-COVID, but we'll get there eventually. Um, but we need to get moving on this because it is the one thing, even with the Millennium Standing, it is the one thing that has held us back in getting conventions because the Millennium did not serve the purpose of a real top-notch uh, headquarter hotel. And so knowing that, that has come down, we've gotten control there, but that's what's in front of us, is putting together a plan so that we can have a headquarter hotel that will draw conventions to this area and hopefully create a need for an expansion of the convention center. Right? I mean, the, these things all work together. They all work hand in hand. And so I think this is a real opportunity for us to work with the city, with, and never mind all the other stakeholders. There are many, many stakeholders um, that will be part of this process. And my, my only question is, and I guess it's to 3CDC, or maybe it's to um, the administrator, you know, as we move through this and the city receives update and the county receives updates, I want to make sure that we have that information on a regular basis so that we can track the progress here, especially related to the hotel, um, as we move forward. And so I don't know what is contemplated by way of the frequency 
of those updates, but I hope we can, Madam President, get that on a regular schedule for Tuesdays for staff meetings mm -hmm. so that we can do a Q&A related to the progress of mm -hmm. um, this convention center district. The resolution indicates that we'll have quarterly reports where we certainly can say um, or agree that we have it every staff meeting. It's up to uh, the board and how uh, frequently they would like those um, reports to come in. Can I, I just to interrupt, I did, I don't mean every staff meeting because I think that probably would be too much, but I, I think quarterly makes sense, me, in it, but as needed, mm -hmm. perhaps, um, mm -hmm. if we find that we want something to uh, come in more frequently, if there's, uh, you know, an opportunity to talk about what is in the offing related to a headquarter hotel as we get closer to something, mm -hmm. um, I think maybe we wouldn't want to hold ourselves to a quarterly meeting. Madam President, if, yes. I, if I could just briefly, I think the way the resolution uh, is written, the way the scope of work is currently written, um, also dictates that uh, 3CDC would be reporting uh, routinely to mm -hmm. myself and to the city manager. Uh, so certainly if there was anything uh, of note that needed to come up, that could be brought to staff meeting immediately. And I have no doubt uh, from my conversations with them that uh, Mr. Leeper and Mr. Gelter would make themselves available for uh, uh, staff meeting presentations, as you had said, Madam President, on a quarterly basis or more frequently if needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, from the chair, I'd like to make a motion to delay our discussion of the resolution since my colleagues have not had adequate time to review uh, the resolution. We would discuss it at our Thursday uh, meeting and then vote on it also on, on that day. So I'd like to make a motion from the chair to delay the discussion of the resolution. Is there a second? I, is there a second? Second. So just by way of discussion, sure. I, um, I, in my office, we've had this since last year. We, we had something from 3CDC last year. We had language. We had conversations about it. So I, I will take as much time as the other offices need to take, but I am fully prepared to move forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh -huh. If you want to introduce the resolution, that's fine. Um, but to uh, Commissioner Driehaus, I, I just want to clarify something. Um, convention Center, I mean, having a convention hotel, I'm okay with. This goes beyond a convention hotel. And you're, she's right. I didn't have this till December last year. They tried to push it through during the, the uh, budget. While we had a budget, we were trying to do the tax rebate. And they said, we'll hold it in now January, but this still stays the same. This is what, this is where the rubber meet the road. And this is what I got a problem with, the scope of work. So I don't know how we address that, mm -hmm. Madam President, but this scope of work, uh, that's what I wanted to say. They can do any type of resolution, but this scope of work got to change. There's no partnership in it. There's no real commitment to the, the partnership of equity, ownership. None of that is in here. And this, you're right, has been, they've been running with this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and the issue of doing a national search, when I first got it in December, I said, let's do a national search. But nothing, nothing shook. So uh, I do want to stand to be corrected. Your, the last resolution that I received was at 1247 p.m. today. Uh, it says, please see the latest, not necessarily final draft of resolution for downtown convention district. So it wasn't at 7 a.m. It was at 1247 p.m. So you're right. but. Um, Madam President, if we do delay it, can we somehow deal with the scope of work? Because this is the, the main piece. Mm -hmm. The scope of work is an attachment to the resolution. Um, so we will discuss the scope of work also on Thursday. So we have a motion on the floor. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Samarjima? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. Madam President, if yes. I could just uh, from a um, order of business perspective. so. I think as it relates to the question about the scope of work and the resolution, so the city obviously has the same scope of work that they're considering with their, with their motion as well. So I would just uh, ask the board that if there are any desired changes to that scope of work that they be reflected in the resolution. Ultimately, what will have to happen here is the, uh, the development of, a, of an MOU between the city, the county, and 3CDC, which would then include an agreed upon scope of work. So if there's any changes at all, uh, that the board would like in that, uh, prescribe it through the resolution, and, and that would be direction to the administration to work on those with 3CDC and, and the city. Well, we have listed on the resolution, which we're not going to discuss right now, but one of the whereas it says, as included in our attached scope of work. I would like to see that scope of work separate 
than the resolution. Attached but separate because that discussion of the scope of work, I think, could there's so many things on that scope of work. But if we can agree on the resolution and what we're intending to do, agree or disagree, I think that's where we need to go. But of course, the scope of work, we can make suggestions, recommendations, but I don't want it to stop the passage or lack of passage of the resolution. So, Madam okay. President, mm -hmm. can I also say to the administration, the scope of work is why I'm concerned because this is the contract. And in the past, this is where the people have gotten screwed on the contracts. Um, and, and that's why I'm concerned. It is, it's nothing personal with anything or the administration. I, we got people sitting there that can't talk right now. They done brought conventions, National Baptist, the Masons is here, the, the, the NAACP. We got to get this right, whether it's at the, at the city and the county, because this is the only thing that matters. Every time I get here, they say, go to the contract. We've done, um, you know, we're, we're reading the stadium deals. They tell me, go to the contract. This is the most important thing. And this, uh, Madam President, is why I guess I'm so passionate about it, because this is what I got a problem with. Okay. And I hope that we can work between now and then, the administrator, the uh, city manager, and get this in, we want it in writing on the front end instead of putting minorities and African-Americans on the back end. The back end has never worked. We wanna try something different. The people that are present here that thought you might be able to speak, uh, comments are uh, accepted on Thursday. So uh, if you thought you could come co comment today, I apologize for that. But if you'd like to come back on Thursday, you're certainly welcome to comment. Thank you very much. We'll move forward. Um, we have an executive session uh, that we need to go in, um, and I will make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to RC section 121.22 G2 to discuss the acquisition of property. Second. Second. Commissioner Samarjuma. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. yes. Thank you.